for educational purpose only. I can, fam. Perfect. Yo, what's up, people? This is a clip from the Talking Loud podcast. Oh, Definitely okay. check out the full episode because it's a banger. And if you want to support the channel, check out Diesel Dog Clothing. We got tons of 5, 4, 20 gear on there for us growers, tokers, and us kind of connoisseurs. And join the I Can Fam on Patreon. The VIP Bean Club is popping. And we do Patreon only live streams every single week, and it's always a fun time. Don't miss out, but do blaze up and enjoy this clip. We, 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 we are about to take it back, back, back. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, guys, we are back with another episode of Talking Loud with a very special guest in the house, Mr. Goodbuds. Huge shout out. What's going on, Mr. Goodbuds? What's up, man? What's up? Appreciate you, man, for having me on, man. Of course, bro. I like that intro, too, man. That's nice. Uh, appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. So how are you, man? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain, man. Trying to uh, take these genetics to the next level. It's solid, solid. Sounds good. Well, I like to kick things off, you know, get everyone sort of introduced to who you are. So just tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into growing. Uh, so you already know my name is Mr. Good Buzz. I'm, uh, I'm based in Detroit. Um, I've been, me getting into growing has been a long, long journey. Uh, I started off uh, watching a lot of other friends grow and they're trying to get me into growing. I went from a few different houses, from house to house, trying to get growing, and I wasn't able to ever do it because of a bunch of different problems. Um, and eventually, um, I had seeds that I had actually ordered. I had them; they was actually a couple years old, and I, um, I had finally moved to this house I'm in now. And I just happened to have the seeds, and my man was like, "Dog, you should go ahead and drop some." And I'm like, "You know what? I'm like, I should, I should go ahead and start it back up again." And uh, so I, that's when I started the, um, my original series with the AK-47. Yeah, uh, yeah, once we right, started right. outside at first, and then uh, and it was so horrible going outside, and it was so stressful to me. I just had to bring it inside, and then and uh, and the recording thing, like I had never planned to put it on YouTube, but I was already recording because I do that anyway. Like everything I do, I record it. I record everything that I'm doing. So somebody, one of my, one of my boys, one day was like, uh, "Why you don't just make YouTube videos?" And I'm like, "I could do that. Like I got the videos already." So. My very first video, I literally took all those, I took all those clips together, put them all together, and that was uh, AK-47, episode one. Sweet, sweet. I remember that, actually, because I was like, I've been following you for a while now, so huge shout oh, out. Oh, man, Everyone I appreciate that, man. That's, down below. That was <laughs> got too. That was like three years ago. Yeah, dude, like, you've actually got, like, um, almost 23, 24,000 subscribers yeah. on YouTube now. You Something smashed like past, like, 4,000, 5,000 on Instagram. So you've got it popping, bro. You've got it popping. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you. God is merciful, man. I've been, he been uh, blessing me. I've been trying to do what I can to keep it going. I'm trying yes, to take man. it to the next level, as always. Yeah, most deaf, most deaf. Now, another thing that I always ask guests on the show, right, is about their name. Every grower that I interview has, like, a different <laughs> name. So I'm always intrigued to find out about their name. Like, tell me about Mr. Goodbuds. How did that come about? Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Goodbuds was a uh, – it was random as hell. I ain't going to lie. I, uh, I was I was literally – actually, I was at work. Um, and I was sitting out with my boy, who the same dude who told me that I should put it on YouTube – and uh, this is the next day after that, and I was we was trying to figure out what should I name myself, and, and we went through a lot of stuff and like just trying to play off of, uh, play off of different names and stuff. And uh, he actually came up with it. He was like, uh, he was like, uh, Mister Goodbar, and then he was like Mister Goodbuzz, and I'm like, that's it right there. I'm like, that's <laughs> I'm like I like that. I like that's it. Just came from there, like Mister Goodbuzz. <laughs> Uh, I like that. I like that. The name is definitely catchy. I like your logo too. Yeah, appreciate you. With, yeah. with the um red eyes, the bugs yeah. the red eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I always thought no. that was funny too, cause like he high off his off his <laughs> off himself basically. 
<laughs> oh shit. No, I like uh, definitely want to pick your brain on some of your growing techniques, right? And I see like you're a big fan of keeping things simple because I know you've got a lot going on in your daily life. Like it was already yeah, like yeah. super hard to even get you on the show. Like, so huge yeah. respect for jumping on, fam. I appreciate that. Officer, like, man. Um, I appreciate you like, Yeah, of course, fam. Um, but just like tell me a little bit about your indoor setup and like how many tents have you got running, what lights have you got running, what's going on in there? So I got I got three tents. I mean I got three tents that I've been running uh that I've been running um for the most part most of my growth time. Um I got the auto well the three by three, which is the most interchangeable uh series, which can be the auto booth, it can be the flower booth. It could be the the breeders booth I got going. It, it, yeah. It'd be a whole bunch of <laughs> <Any> stuff, <booth. laughs> right? Exactly. Anything with any booth. But uh, my main my main girl that I'm more um, that I'm more consistent with is the photo booth because I I love the photos. So I got yeah. the four by four. Fo- oh, hold on, let me go back. The three by three right now is running the Mars Hydro um, FC three thousand. So I actually uh, put a small light in there, which has been really cool because it's been. Uh, I've been learning the value of less is more, and uh, and in this attic, I'm I'm actually in the attic, so it's, it gets extremely hot up here, especially during the summer. Ooh. And uh, with the bigger lights, I was doing the bigger light. I like, I mean, the bigger lights in the tent was working really good, but when I started trying to, when I started going up too far, um, it started. It was just uh, inferno inside the tent all the times, and and I actually learned like over time, the better you train the canopy flat, the light don't even have to be that that strong uh i was always worried about the penetration but i am learning more about training the canopy and making the plant fit the light better so i've been yeah. getting good results with less light um and then the photo booth has right well it's getting it's about to have right now it's the mars hydro fc 6500 which is huge as hell it's ridiculous uh yeah, and that's about to get downgraded well. to uh it's about to get downgraded to the. It's it's not a downgrade. It's the FCE sixty five hundred, but I'm not gonna use all the bars because that's the one that got the detachable bar. Yeah, and so yeah. they already they already send it out to me. Um, so instead of putting that whole, even though sixty five hundred watts isn't too much for the four by four, because that's right around that, but it is huge as shit though. Like it's a huge light, and it's a it's kind of a nightmare moving it up and down and shit like that inside that tent. And it's not really meant for that tent. They really made it for a five by five. So you know. I'm just stuffing shit inside of <laughs> tiny places. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, uh, and the Vez booth, it's, the Vez booth is really toned down. It's just the uh, TSW 2000 there, just running on like 150 watts, probably less than that. Jeez. And uh, I veg out everything in there. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much what the whole setup is. Dope, dope. I run a, quite a few Mars Hydro lights as well. I run the FC 6500, the SP3000. I, like I love the, the SP3000. It's been yeah, my favorite light so far. Man. Yeah, the SP is pretty sick. It fits like a 4x2 mm. tent perfect. Like yes, perfect. man. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, like, aside from the lights themselves, like, I saw you mention, like, less is more sometimes with the lights as well right so mm. it, while always having a big light seems to be a cool thing it may not always be necessary like plants right. can get away with smaller lights exactly. so can you want to you want to just like explain that a little bit more yeah so so with the a big thing about what i try to explain with people a lot of people always ask me like how many plants can you grow in the tent and and how much weed you'll get from i always explain to people that it doesn't really matter how many plants you have in the tent. It's all about how much light you have versus, versus your plants. So I've learned, I always, I always try to go over that light, but I, but it was really just a conversation for, for a very, very uneven canopy and, and the light penetration. Uh, and so I went, I, I still do the 35 Watts per square foot, but I just yeah. keep it right around that or maybe a little under that. And then to make up for which I had great success with my last girl, I trained the canopy a lot more even and, and make sure there's a lot more training and penetration done um, to the plants so that so that all that penetration, so you don't have to have too much light and too much heat because with the extra light comes extra heat. And, and, and as long as you stay around that 35 watts per square foot, like you really don't need anything more than that like the light as long as you got enough light for your space you're gonna get the yield for that space as long as you do everything else right yeah so, 
That's what yeah, I've been that's trying a really to work good on. Point. That's a really good point there, bro. Because like also to like the the lights when you, I guess when you bring them down a bit, also mm-hmm. you don't need to have that much power, right? Exactly. So when exactly. you have a lot that's of light, it raises like a lot of heat as well. So mm-hmm. when you turn that bitch all the way up, like the temps exactly. are going to raise in your grow room, you'll find difficulty keeping those temps down. Yeah, that could lead to like fox stealing and shit. That's yeah, exactly what you just said too. Like if you it's, you can always move the light up and down too. Like you don't have to have. It don't have to be on blast if you don't if you feel like it's not enough and it's not bright you can bring it down a little bit and this yeah. is another thing with the big ass lights in the tent it's it's hard as hell to to move them and like like move yeah, them up and down dude. and stuff like that was another thing that drove me crazy so i'm like having the three thousand there right now like it's so it's so beautiful i just reached back there <laughs> move the light up like i haven't had it like that in a while so yeah that's another thing yeah, and I know you're all about making things easy in the grow room, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got to, man. I got, man. I got, I got another yeah. baby on the way right now, so it's about to be number eight. Oh, dope! So Congrats, I got, fam. Yeah, thank you, bro. So I got that'll be my. I got two babies right now. I got a three year old and a one year old, and I'm about to have another baby. So y'all can imagine how yeah. busy as hell I be. Yeah, so you guys see why it was so difficult to get Mr. Good Buds <laughs> on the show, right? <laughs> Mad respect, bro. Now, why are you trying no. to keep it simple? <laughs> yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Uh, now, that brings me like back to environment, right? Environment is super important, especially yeah. when you're running some of these big lights that like can run the temps pretty high. So how do yeah. you deal with your environment? Do you run like a carbon filter? I know you mentioned it gets a little hot in the attic. Now, my environment, I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, my, the environment up here has been a nightmare for me, um, and, uh, which is how I come to come to a lot of my it's not that serious like attitude when it comes to the plants because I kind of had to like give in to a lot of shit when it comes to environment. Like one, there's no humidity up here at all, and like yeah. and it is impossible. I'm telling you, it is impossible to keep the humidity sustained inside these tents up here especially in the wintertime. In the summertime, is okay. I could probably keep the humidity stays around 50, 50s, 60s. Um, but in the wintertime, it get down to like 20, and there's no humidifier. I actually do got a – I got like a, a, a humidifier I built for my uh, – for some mushrooms, uh, mycology I was doing, but like it's not ideal. I don't got no space up here. It's tiny as shit. So <laughs> it's, it's like that's another thing. Like it's tiny as hell, and – and I can't, I can't keep the humidity. So things like that, I had to give up on. There's never humidity yeah. up here. The only humidity that I can maintain is in the drying room, where it's most important to me. Because yeah. if I don't, then the, like I said, the humidity, man. The first, the AK-47. So let me tell you, I dried that shit out. And I wasn't even up here. I was in the basement then, but it was a small ass room, and I had to move up here because of the size of the tent difference and all that shit. But, but being and having and wanting to have more than one tent, but. It was it, it humid, the humidity was so low, and I was new then. I put a dehumidifier in the tent. I left the fans on. I hung it. I hung the plant in there. And let me tell you, that plant, them bitches dried in like three days. So I came back. I came back like them bitches was was desert. Then it was so dry. I'm like, oh shit, it was over. I destroyed them. Like it, it was no fixing that. Thing. And I'm like, maybe. I'm like, maybe that was too much. So I tried to turn fans off. That wasn't enough. I had to actually get a humidifier, not a dehumidifier. So I was completely backwards. And uh, there's no better up here. It's, it's, so, it's, it's way worse. So I, I I just keep the I, – I maintain the humidity in the, in the closet because it's an actual sealed closet that I got the dry room yeah. in. I can put a humidifier in there, and there's no vents, nothing for the humidity to escape out of there but the crack of the door. So it's, it works in there. But in, in here, it's over. Um, yeah. I, I am able to maintain the heat um, to a certain extent. Like I said, in the, in the summertime, it gets pretty bad. And the AC works, but it only works. It only keeps these two tents cool. The three by three is always hot as fuck. It's like, it's like the, the AC doesn't reach there. So yeah. that it's, it's always at the mercy of the rest of the room. And it's hot as shit in there all the time. Where the fall bar for it be straight because it's right next to the uh, air conditioning. So I be man, the 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 environment up here be be a bitch. But after after all this time, and I'll be happy to move and actually be able to control it really well. Um, 
the plants still survive, but I uh and they do adjust to the humidity and the and the weather and things like that. But yeah. it would be nice to to be able to actually have a great environment up here because it'd be all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Over. But I see that that's a that's like a bit of a difficult thing that you have to like keep pushing through, right? And I guess yeah. it's a lot of trial and error because like it'll the temperature and humidity will just keep mm-hmm. changing. And it wouldn't be the same for like you as opposed to like maybe me where I am, you know. So right. all the trial and error, right? hmm yeah. yeah. Then I stay in the hood too. So my house, my house ain't even like greatly insulated. So like even in the wintertime, like they yeah. the heat, they be having the heat. The wife and kid, they having the heat on blast because the, the house won't insulate, it won't stay hot, it yeah. won't stay warm. But then I'm up in the attic, I be burning the fuck up. So I gotta <laughs> open the windows all the way and shit, letting all the winter yeah. air in. It be man, that shit be crazy. Bro. <laughs> that shit, man. Yeah, those are things that you literally don't think about. Like, yeah. <laughs> those are difficult things you don't think about. Now, like before we get into like training and all of that stuff, right? I always ask growers how they start off their seeds because everyone starts their seeds differently, and there are a million different ways. So I'm just curious, how do you start your seeds? Well, so I go straight in the soil with the seeds. I uh, I was a big, I, I mean, not I was. I am a big fan of Mr. Canuck, even though he don't post as much anymore. But I use it like, I use it like this shit. Like, most of my growth style is based off his. Yeah. And, uh, so I do, I, I'm a firm believer, and I tried, I tried other ways, and uh, the to paper towel method, putting it in the cups, and, and that, that stuff works. But I just, like I said, keep it easy. I found putting it in the pot. And I almost always get 100% germination going straight into yeah. the pot, uh, straight with the seeds. It would have like a shot of water, pinch it over, just like a, and not too deep either, like like half yeah. an inch into that dirt, put that yeah. seed, and then a little water. I like to make sure that the seed gets a saturation of water before I cover it up. And then yeah. after I cover it up, then I hit the, I hit a nice little circle around the seed, just like a, maybe like a three inch circle circumference around that seed with some more water. I have beautiful results with that. Nice, nice. Do you no use like a, a solo cup over top to create like a Oh, humidity yeah, zone? yeah, I didn't say that. That's another thing. The, uh, the humidity dome, now I have literally, I have literally not used humidity domes and got zero germination and then used humidity domes and got 100% germination. Like the, the, the humidity domes is a, make a world of difference for the seeds. It creates that 100% humidity inside that dome is like, detrimental to the uh i I, i'm not i gotta say i mean i guess when you're doing the uh when you're dipping in the cup and then you're doing paper top method that's also 100 percent uh humidity and rh so so i would imagine it's always detrimental to the seed to have that 100 percent rh and keep that whole environment moist uh because they they love it i use anything for the domes cups dixie cups cut off uh i just last girl i cut off the uh the bottoms of uh water bottles and anything works for it Super creative. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I got it, man. I got to keep it cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do the same thing, bro. Like, I'm all about saving money. Now, mm-hmm. I see you did like a really nice discussion episode on watering, right? And all of the basics, because yeah. that's super important. Like you actually mentioned how freaking important water yeah. is to plants. And like they're made up of 85% water. Exactly. Like I didn't even know that. So yeah. my respect, that's dope. Now, can you, you just explain why like water is so important for plants? Water is going to be, water is basically the main way, um, the, the the main point of, of the plants feeding. I don't know how I'm trying to say it. I'm trying to sound scientific, but that's how they eat the most. Like that's yeah. how they take up their nutrients. The water is the water is how the nutrients break down. Well, my growing style. See, I, I always I can't speak on everybody's growing style because with the dry nutrients, the water is important for breaking down those nutrients because that helps the microbes get into those get into that into those dry nutrients, start breaking that down. That moist keeping the water moist always helps with that. And yeah. the plant being made up of eighty five eighty five percent of water or more, it's it's whole life sustain sustaining sustainability is based on it being able to drink water but it's but with the the thin ice thing about it is that they don't like more water than what they need and so that was one thing i learned too and and being a i mean i'm not even a that experienced girl i mean it's only been like three and a half years um but in the beginning for me and i noticed that a lot of people do when they first start growing this always trying to water those plants and give them water 
whenever you just want to see them grow. Like, <laughs> like I go up to the tent, like, they ain't growing yet. It was water. Like, <laughs> like, like, that's how I was me at first. And they, they be sick as fuck off that shit. So I literally, like, make sure that they go completely dry. And then and then I hit them with some water. And, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, basically, yeah. They go, they, you can tell the difference when they don't get water. They pretty much almost turn to crisp. Like, they yeah. lose their life for us when they don't have no water. Yeah. One thing that I found myself is, like, when you don't water them for a while, you feel like the leaves are very, very soft. And if you, like, water mm-hmm. them too much, they you overwater them, the leaves almost become, like, fat and swollen with yeah. water. Like, you can feel it in the leaves. Yeah. So it's it's something that, that, that I guess, goes to what you're saying. Like, yeah. plants are mostly made up of water, right? Yeah. That's something I always tell people when they... They ask me, how can you tell the difference between overwater and underwater? And exactly what you just said. When you underwater, the plants feel they have a different feeling to them where they actually thin as hell and they feel yeah. like they they empty. weaken. And yeah, yeah, and they empty versus the overwater when they drooping because they heavy. Because yeah. they didn't fill it up with so much water. And it's, it's, that's the difference right there. Yeah, definitely. Now, overwatering can be like an extremely common problem amongst yeah. beginner growers, right? Like it can be super fatal as well. Like, just run through with us. How do you water your plants? Like, autumn watering, regular? I like the hand watering. Yeah. I've, uh, and now, I, and I know if y'all watch my videos, y'all see me, I be, I be rushing. I be telling myself, like, uh, stop (laughs) rushing and stop, like, like, water them slow. Like, you, I like to water hand slow, like, hand water slowly. And, like, and you, and you should let it, like, I like to let it fill up and then sink down and I keep going a little bit at a time. That's how you should do it, yeah. uh, and that's my favorite method, and that's that helps with breaking down those nutrients and things like that, and not overwatering the plant and giving the plant too much water more than what it needs. Um, but I know y'all see me just dump the whole thing. I dump, the, I dump yeah, the whole I thing that in there. Like, I'm done. Zip the tin up. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> I, don't even that I don't even let that shit sink in. I just close it. Like you good? Man. Yeah. yeah. I like the hand water, and I had a little pump I was using before, but in this setting, in this in this size, it's easier just to hand water. Maybe in a bigger in a bigger setting, maybe future dispensary stuff, I may get into. I may try and get into a watering system and stuff. But I like the I like the hand water. Yeah, same, same. I like the hand watering. It helps me get into with yeah. my plants and stuff but i also just like dump a top a bunch of yeah. water over top and like that, that <laughs> should be spilling out the side of the fabric part of the shit. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. and then you yeah. there's water all in the tent you're like ah. yeah. yeah i do that shit every day now and aside from like just watering like but related there's a lot of people who do like the ice harvest technique like i'm kind of jumping around here a bit have you ever done that uh uh-uh, you said ice harvest yeah, like when you put like all of a bunch of ice before harvest at the roots of the plant by the stalk down near the, near the base. Uh, I never yeah. heard of that before. It's supposed to like boost trichome production and bring out purple colors and stuff. I mean, it's stuff like that. Like that stuff is cool, but Bro things signs. like that is is things like that make it get hard for me to do. Like when I get to trying to do extra stuff like like that, I be like. Man, let me tell you, I be first of all, this last couple of months, I've had to get really, really, really diligent with not fucking over my plants by letting them dry too long <laughs> and not over letting them sit in the tent after I was put them in 48 hours of darkness and then it'd be a whole week later and then my <laughs> plants still sitting there and dry as fuck. I just did that to the photo booth in season four. And I literally left it in there for like, it was like eight days, man. And they, and they missed the dry <laughs> shit. <laughs> Like, I be trying to be diligent and make myself do the normal <laughs> shit. Like, this shit that I, I have to do. Like, like doing yeah. other stuff outside of that, I would love to try. But yeah. just knowing me, I, I, I'm going to fuck it up. Like, I ain't going yeah. to get to it. Yeah, I did it once just to experiment. I didn't see yeah. any huge difference or anything. I did notice, like, a shit ton of water on the floor the next day from all the melted ice. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, hell yeah. See, all right. That'd be crazy as hell. Man, yeah. I, I I killed uh I killed one of my mom plants. Like that's been my thing this year is like be more diligent on the stuff that I I have to do. Like I cause I, I let one of my mom plants die. I had to reset it. I did get clones from it. I just happened to get clones from it, but I let it die because I didn't uh 
I didn't prune the roots like I should. And I, 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 I yeah. prune the, I'm supposed to prune the roots every six months. So, like, that's been my thing lately is just been trying to master my regular craft. Like, I feel like I haven't even mastered my own craft yet. So, I'm trying to get that down pack. And then, like, I do like experiments, though. I like watching stuff like that. You know yeah. yeah, definitely. It's just worth a try. Now, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, pruning the roots. I don't hear many people speak about that. So, just give me a little bit of info on that. Well, if, I mean, pruning roots really not going to be necessary unless you keep a mother plant. Like, yeah, like with I the mother it. plants, like they get root bound and then they need to be, and then those prunes need to be, and I mean, those roots need to be pruned. Now I keep, I make, I keep like really small bonsai type moms and, uh, and I keep them in two gallon pots. So yeah, they, um, they need to be, they last for about six months without being pruned, but it's, it's really necessary because they don't get pruned. They'll die like fast as shit. Um, mm-hmm. and how I do it, I just, I just, I use the fact price that I could open up on the side. I just yeah. pull it out and I just cut, like cut, like probably like I want to say like sixty percent of the roots off. Like I leave a small root ball and yeah. I cut like sixty percent off and then I fill it up with half dirt and then have uh, worm castings. They love worm castings for uh, yeah, they do for um, especially for pruning the roots. I don't know, I've 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 done it without it and done it with worm castings and they always bounce back way faster with worm castings for some reason. Hmm, pretty interesting. Like, I never really thought about pruning the roots like that. But now that I'm thinking about it, it makes a lot of sense. And I was actually going to ask you, like, I saw that you had a plant that looked like it was in a, I don't know, like a five gallon or a seven gallon. And it, I think it was like one year old, but it wasn't that, like, big. It was like, yeah. pretty short, like what you just mentioned. Yeah, so yeah. was that one of the moms? Yeah, yeah, that would be a bonsai mom, yeah. So I keep all of them. I basically... I basically, the way I create them, I basically let them grow super tall, and and then I just cut them at the bottom node, and then I let them grow from there. And then every time they grow tops, I cut those tops off, and the and the the, the stem end up getting like huge, yeah. and it turns into like a huge full grown plant, but it stays tiny. I just do that because of my limited amount of space, and like I want to keep all the good genetics that I have, but I only got one tent to yeah. house them in, and I just I so I had I ended up finding that and. That's been working really well for me. Yeah, like, I wouldn't be dope. able to keep a uh, like like how Canuck Canuck got a whole room with his mom plants in it, and he be having like he be having his mom in like ten gallon pots. <laughs> like I would only be able to fit one of them in there. So, yeah. It's true, but that's pretty dope because like the stalk was literally like mm-hmm. I love big, how like, like, knuckles. Like this. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. So I yeah. definitely I, I I was like yeah, I gotta ask Mister Good Buds about this. Like how how yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, uh that's probably like my only experiment I ever done just because I knew I knew that I was going I was going to want to keep them and they and they work really well too like I never have any issues all the plants you ever see me grow it, uh, most 9 times out of 10 unless I, they came from seed they came from one of them bonsai mom and they and they they work really well yeah, I'll definitely have to give that a go, bro. Because like I never thought of that, but keeping mother plants always seemed like such a stress to me. But now that it is, you, like man. you brought that up, I'm like, yeah, you could do that. That's easy. It is. Though. It is stressful though. I ain't yeah, gonna lie. That's why is, I've been yeah. looking into. That's why I've been trying to like, like uh, have seeds and getting them breeding and stuff. Cause just because yeah. of the whole OG thing, like when my mom plant dying, like I ne- I didn't think that I didn't know that was gonna happen. Like yeah. and then I had another plant. That's probably when you were talking about on ID the one that was dying. Yeah, and that one, that one just died out of nowhere. It's only a year old. Uh, my OG plant lasted for two years, and I true. just I just let it die by accident. And when I took clones from it one day, thinking it was fine, the next yeah. day it died. Like it just wow. slumped over. It was dead the next day because it couldn't withstand it. So I thought I took yeah. the clones off of it. And yeah. so like all the issues, I do have a lot of issues with the mod plants. Like they don't last forever. I mean, you can yeah. always reset. And another thing I worry about is people, a lot of people be saying that the, uh, like the more times I take a clone, like every time I reset, the genetic is going to get weaker. I'd be worried about that shit too. I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, it, it makes sense. And eventually I feel like I'm going to need to have some seeds to replace with a fresh, with a fresh, uh, like OG, a fresh OG yeah. one. Yeah, I've heard that as well. But like I've heard like I guess there are two strains of thought on it. One is that like a clone is a genetic copy, so there should be no degradation of the genetics. I would like to be I would like it to be like this. There is always the potential that there right. is the degradation of the genetics, right? So you guess yeah. you just never know. Now, I'm gonna um, find out though. 
Yeah, for sure. I think we should both try to find out. Yeah. Okay, guys. So definitely check out the rest of that episode. Make sure you drop a like and a sub down below. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace, fam.